Okay. So what is a VLAN? Actually, what is a LAN? LAN we talked about is a is an extended LAN is actually um, is is a broadcast domain. So here you think no. I, okay, let me let me correct myself. So we used to do the term LAN and extended LAN. Now the word extended LAN is gone. Somehow from so in the beginning the extended the when the bridges were just new thing, we distinguish between LAN and extended LAN. Now everything is a LAN. All right. So basically a LAN is a broadcast domain. So this whole thing is one LAN up to here. When the router comes in, the LAN ends. All right. So there are two LANs here because there is a router. There are two LANs. This is one LAN, and then there is something on this side. In this picture, there are two LANs, right? So we will not use the word extended LAN anymore. For simplicity, we'll just call them LAN. And so single broadcast domain is one subnet. Are a subnet is a LAN. So no routing between the members of a LAN. If you want to go talk from here to there, you don't use IP at all. You don't need IP at all. You can just send a MAC frame and then it will go there fast and everything is done. So you can talk Ethernet. So we speak the same language. We just use that Ethernet address and we can talk on this side. But if I want to talk to the other side, I need the IP addresses. So we need a router. Right? So that is the definition of a LAN. A LAN is an Ethernet broadcast domain and when we want to talk to somebody on the LAN we don't need IP we can just do with Ethernet addresses we can send messages but we want to go and cross the go to other LAN which is not in the same broadcast domain we have to go through the router and the routers only understand the IP addresses and therefore I have to get an IP address of the other side yeah go ahead so what is the yeah link local addresses this is a link link local this could be whole thing could be one link because what is happening is with the link local address, when you decide to get an address, what you do is you, and this is an IP address, right? You say, well, I'm selecting this IP address. Is anybody else have that address? That's a broadcast message. It will be sent to all of these people. And if somebody else has it, you won't get it. If nobody has it, you can use that. So this is the whole thing is one link, not two links. Yeah, so you can communicate with other people on the same link using link local addresses. If you want to talk to them, IP for some reason, yeah. So here's the reason. I'll tell you why you need IP though. I, I maybe I may confuse you a little bit. Let's say you want to do file transfer protocol, FTP. You cannot do FTP without going through IP because FTP requires TCP. TCP requires IP. You understand? So even if two stations on the same, this server and this client want to do FTP, they will, because the protocol is designed so that they need IP. But you could design a protocol, and there were lots of protocol designed in the original days of Ethernet which did not need IP. And so I could transfer a file between these two, but I will have to design a new protocol which doesn't use TCP IP. You see what I mean? So with the current protocol that we have, they need the whole stack. But one can always line. So there are many protocols. And where is Azin? Azin said, well, IP is a routed protocol. Basically, there are protocols which are not routed, which only stay on one side of the router. And one of the examples is LAT, local area terminals. With the local area terminals, I can talk to my server in the, in the, in the local area but not to the other server outside. And why did they, they, they develop LAT? Because in those days, the network was so slow. If you went beyond the router, your key will not feel very good. I mean, the keys will take time to get echoed. So LAT was very fast. And so they have lots of protocols that do not require IP. They will work on one side. Link layer address is called MAC address, also called LAN address, also called A22, 802 address. They're all the same thing. All right, so now we understand that this is one LAN, two LANs here. Now, what if people said that what if I have multiple departments and I don't want them, uh, one department to see any traffic of the other department? 
So you have an engineering department, you have a marketing department, you have a manufacturing department, you have accounting. And accounting has everybody's salaries, data, and they are talking to each other. They don't want any people to be snooping on their traffic. Right? So they said, let's have virtual lands. So virtual land means that um, these people, when they broadcast, their broadcast will not be sent to these other people. This switch is smart enough to know that this is one LAN, this is second LAN, and this is third virtual LAN. Virtual LAN. Really, I'm, in reality, they are all one LAN, but by management, they have been divided into three virtual LANs. Right? Having one home, for example, and making three apartments out of it. So people in one apartment cannot go into the other apartment, things like that, right? So that is the situation. So the switches are smart enough saying that my this port traffic will not go to that port. So that is called virtual LAN. And if you want to go there, from one LAN to the next LAN, you need a router. So if you want to go from this subnet, so this is one subnet, this is second subnet, this is third subnet, if you want to go from that subnet to that subnet, you go to the router here and then you go like that. So this is a one armed router. One armed router means it has only one port, not two ports even. Everything comes in and goes out the same door. Okay? So, and that is because we have two different lands, two different subnets, so each virtual land is a subnet. And, um, and therefore you need a router, and so you put a router, and then it will take it packets from here, change the IP, I mean basically send it to the right IP subnet, and so on. The broadcast will not go through, yeah. Now it might have two subnets, means it might have two IP. So it, has it has two, so basically one physical interface, but three, virtual interfaces. And um, now that's a question. I have to think about that. I mean, it could probably have three, but you know, one is fine <laughs> for the time being. I will have a problem with three. Actually, one, because the, the problem is if somebody opted it and somebody says, what is the MAC address for this um, IP address, then that is the answer. What is the yeah, I think we will need three IP, three MAC addresses as well. Any other question? All right. <clears throat> so basically what we did was we took a number of hosts and put them into three groups as shown in the previous example. A blue group, a red group, and a green group because this is one department, this is the second department, this is the third department, and they can, they look like they are connected by wire like that even though they are all connected together, but physically we have broken the connections. So the manager decides who is on what land, who is red, who is blue, who is green, and that's why it is called virtual. So why do you want to do virtual lands? Because virtual is better than the real, believe it not. Anything. You know, nowadays we do everything on the internet, and everything on the internet is better than the real. Shopping, entertainment, everything, right? So virtual is better than the real, the reason is because it is location independent. The marketing people don't have to be on that campus. They could be here and be in the part of marketing. Right? Users can move but not change the land. Traffic between the lands, you could move your, you are in the engineering department and go to the chemistry department. Well, engineering and chemistry, maybe not a good example. Engineering and you wanted to go to medical school, you could go to that one but stay, still here, stay here. So traffic between lands is routed, better to keep all the traffic on one land. Switch when you can route when you must. So routing is generally avoided, and that's why we try to use the LAN as much as possible. It also provides better security. So VLANs are good, and they are wildly successful. So there are lots of VLANs. So there are three types of VLANs. Layer 1, Layer 2, Layer 3. And I am again not sure that book goes into all this different extent, but if I cover a topic, I really need to cover all this. So I'm just going to finish it with three LANs. Layer 1 is one which which basically physical ports like this. Basically every switch 
knows that port 1 is LAN 1, port 2 is LAN 2, port 3 is LAN 3 and so on and so forth, by everybody on that physical port is on one LAN. So every switch will have a port like this, port A1 is on LAN 1, port A2 is on LAN 2, port A3 on LAN 1 and so on and so forth. That was layer 1 VLAN. That was the beginning of the VLAN world. Soon we realized that that's not really good because people can move from one port to the next. What do we do? So then we said, okay, we'll have layer 2 VLANs where we remember the Ethernet addresses. So this is VLAN 1 Ethernet address, this is VLAN 2 Ethernet addresses, and this became very, very complicated for the managers because managers cannot remember anybody's MAC addresses, and so they had difficulty keeping track of all this. So, so that went down for some time. Then we are going to LAN 3. The layer 3 VLANs. In the layer 3 VLAN, they said every subnet is in a VLAN, and so therefore, once you get the IP address, then whatever IP address you got, that VLAN you are on. Alright? So when we gave you the IP address, that time we checked out everything. We, you gave your MAC address, and you gave your name, and you gave your password, and everything else, and we said, okay, you are marketing. You got the marketing IP address. Once you got the marketing IP address, you are in the marketing VLAN. That is called layer 3 VLAN. Huh? Well, I mean, it could be either way. You could be assigned manually, but it could be assigned DSCP. Yeah, when you move, then basically the, some somewhere they will know that um, this MAC address is. Um, so there is a mixture here. I mean, somewhere somebody has to really tell you whether you are part of this VLAN or not. So that's how it is. So basically, right now, this is the one. Layer 3 VLANs are very popular. And so once you get the IP subnet, then you are on that VLAN. And it could be marketing department, it could be just an area. For example, this building could be one VLAN. If you're sitting in the same room, how would that work? Stay on you know, so VLAN means that you, you share the broadcast. I mean, basically, you, you have the broadcast in that LAN, and you can see each other's traffic. What we think of VLAN and VPN? So VPN is virtual private network. It has more to do with the security. When you connect to the company or connect to the university from a remote location, you don't want anybody on the way to see the traffic. You encrypt it and you send it. That is called a VPN. And that will be, if we discuss it, it will be discussed in Chapter 8 or something like that. There is security. But there is no security issue here. Nothing is encrypted here in VLANs. Everything is clear and open except that the question is who can see your traffic, who can see the broadcast and multicast. And uh, that is um, that is VLAN members can see. All right. Now, I think that would be a good point to stop.